Well, hello everyone and happy new year to you. This is our first Q&A for 2024. Many of you have been eagerly asking and anticipating to do the Q&A and mop up uh, some common questions as well as some unique ancillary ones. And we're here to do that today with my fellow friend and mate business partner, Chris. And he's been kind enough to join us. So Chris, thanks for taking out some time on the show to uh, address audience concerns and questions today. Yeah. Thank you. How are you, John? Is everything all right with you? Frenetic, mate. Just uh, getting over a, uh, <clears throat> a cold from the holidays, as I'm sure people heard. I'm just kind of getting back on the mend. And uh, our schedule, as you know, is rounding out for this month. And we've got a, a busy one for February. Thankfully, the people seem to enjoy what we're doing. So the momentum is continuing. But uh, by the grace of God, uh, I am here and um, excited to uh, kind of answer any questions that, you know, you've been putting all the stuff together. And then I have a few questions for you on the uh, the marketing and technical side of things that I know you'll be able to address. So, yeah, I'm good. Thanks for that. And uh, I will turn it over to you for whatever questions you may have. Yeah, that's fine. I've got a few stuff here we're going to run through in a minute. It's good to see you're looking better um, for the audience. We do right. speak pretty much every day. And, um, yeah, it's good to see you on camera again for the first time this year. So Likewise. You're looking well. You're looking well. Thank you. All right, so we're going to go straight into it. So the last time we spoke, it was before Christmas on camera. And there was a lot of build up to the RV is meant to be happening. Um, there was a lot of things going around saying it was going to happen around Christmas, first uh, week of January in the new year, some point in January. So I am seeing a lot of emails and comments of um, a lot of our audience asking, where is it at at the moment? So what, what, where is it looking like it's going to go? Because I feel like a few people, they feel disappointed, like there was meant to happen. And let us know what your uh, view on this is, John. Sure. Well, <clears throat> no, it's a fair question. I'm going to answer in two parts. Firstly, as I've said before, and, and I know you're aware, and I'm sure most of the audience is aware, this is God's timing. It's his blessing. It, it, it's never, God is never late and he's never early. He doesn't work on our timetables. And that's good because we would mess it up. Uh, but it will happen when he wants it and needs it to happen. And as Kim Clement said, when things seem at their worst, I will free my people. Mm -hmm. Now to specifics on the breakdown of your question, as I told you in the audience and Nick on <clears throat> the shows we do with him monthly, I had said pretty consistently by January 1st, everything's going to change. Some people ran with that. A lot of people have selective hearing. They hear what they want to hear or what tickles their ears or whatever the case may be. What I was saying is by January 1st, we're going to see a lot of changes happen. I didn't say by January 1st, it was all said and done. I wouldn't do that. We don't do dates and rates here. I've been right. pretty firm about that. We're looking at timelines. That being said, I think we can agree that um, there's been a huge uptick of activity in the world since January 1st in the new year. We had the uh, earthquakes that have happened in Japan, here in California, Indonesia. We have all kinds of resignations that are happening that we put on our Telegram channel daily that people can see the copious amount of information. Um, I just did, as you know, a weekly wrap up, which we're going to be sharing with the audience shortly after this interview. And <laughs> excuse me, and uh, cough reminding it's still lingering. And uh, what's going on right now is that we have the Jordanian and Pakistani military has started to do attacks on Iran. Mm -hmm. And uh, Saudi Arabia has just welcomed in Iraq to the WTO, the World Trade Organization. But to do that, they have to be on a reinstated rate, not a program rate, which people will remember I've talked about is a suppressed controlled rate, like the rest of the world is doing with their currencies up to this point, which is about to change. Um, we put out information as a little <clears throat> tickler to the question that um, the Central Bank of Iraq has just announced that they are de-dollarizing by the end of this year. People need to take a, a breath, and, and we're not waiting till December. We need to remember something, Chris, that's very important. I think people should write this down as it's important information, which is the following. Here in America, and I'm sure in Europe, as you know, in England, <clears throat> there's a difference between the calendar year in the fiscal year. So for an example, October 1st, the economists know is the new physical year starts, right? In England and America, to copy each other. Just because the calendar says October, people think that's the fourth quarter of the year. If that's the fourth quarter of the calendar year, that's not the quarter of the financial year. So yeah. Iraq operates the same way. 
their fiscal year starts April 1st. So when they said they're coming to the end of the year, they're talking about March 2023 ends and segues into April 1st. So what they're yeah. telling you is the back wall is April 1st. It can happen anywhere between now and then. Okay, so we're in a, what are we, at the end of January, February, we'll say 60 plus day window, conservatively speaking, as a timeline. Yeah. Now we look last year, they did a small revalue, which proves that they can do it without having to be in the WTO or passing any of the oil and gas laws. They could do whatever they want. They yeah. haven't done it yet because of corruption hasn't been ferreted out to its worst point. Now that we're seeing Iran getting involved, we're waiting for Iraq, excuse me, uh, for Israel to make their grave mistake and bomb the secret nuclear power plants. That can happen anytime between now and the end of the first quarter. So cautiously, I would say to people, that's where we are. And based on that information, I would say that it can happen between anywhere between now and April 1st. We should be looking at as the events uptick in the Middle East, people's eyes will be off Iraq. When that happens, it will happen because things will be at their worst. So yeah. that's where we are. And I would say that we're in a first quarter window for things to precipitate. Okay, cool. Great answer. So um, you, we do keep mentioning Iraq when it comes to um, the RV and mm -hmm. the Middle East. And so what about the rest mm -hmm. of the countries um, like Vietnam? <clears throat> When do they come? Do they come after Iraq happens, or is it all going to happen simultaneously? What's what's your opinion on this? Because it won't be it won't be there's... simultaneous. Because as I said on our show this week, yeah. with up front the prophetic, two reasons. One, that would be insider trading, and that would be illegal. Not that these yeah. guys are not ethical, but I'm just saying by yeah. financial law, they yeah. they can't do that. There's penalties for that. But the overarching thing, Chris, is that. Um, God knows and understands that not everybody is in the same place in this movement. Some people have been like me and, and you in the dinar for many years. Some people are new to it. Some people maybe have been in it for a couple of years. Everybody's in a different place, like puberty. So God understands wholly that there are some people who are going to miss the dinar. who are going to miss the zim. who are going to miss the dong. And so you have 209 countries and provinces to as a totality of the world. That's why this wealth transfer is in waves because yeah. everybody will catch it at a different time. As a segue to your question, <clears throat> so it won't all, all go at once. Secondly, to your question, what's next? Vietnam right now, Taiwan just held their, their elections um, on the 13th. Unfortunately, the, can the candidate we were hoping for that was an independent, peaceful candidate was illegally snubbed, not unlike the rest of the world. Uh, but that's to highlight corruption, because this is the year of shock and awe. This is the year of vindication. This is the year of the we from the tears. All the things that people said would never happen will start happening front and center. OK, so people can take solace in that. That being said, um, Vietnam is quietly preparing to to reinstate. As I said the other day on the show, Iraq and Vietnam have been here before. It's just been quite a while. So they're reinstating where other countries are revaluing who have never been here. Hmm. Vietnam is in a situation waiting for China-Taiwan conflict. I think what you're going to see is the continuation of Iraq. While that happens, what will be brought to a boil is precipitating the China-Taiwan conflict, which should be short-lived and is scripted like everything else. That will be enough to free Vietnam, enough out of communism to break free, because Vietnam doesn't have a financial issue like Iraq. They have a corruption issue, not unlike many other countries throughout the world. So I think we'll see Vietnam fall shortly after Iraq. And then I think we'll see Indonesia and Zimbabwe. What we're waiting for is Nelson Chamisa to be reappointed as president, which, as I said on Mahoney's show last week, he's shown concrete proof that they are, in fact, what we've said before, the breadbasket to the world. And they're fully prepared to come back on a gold standard for the Zim bonds, for the Zim dollars, for the agro checks. And I'll bake this in as an addendum. Yes, the agro checks will be profitable. I know I don't know what the rate will be as compared to what my idea is about the Zim, but I can assure the audience that if you're holding agro checks, you'll be quite satisfied. And all of these currencies and bonds are going to go on a digital asset backed platform based on gold and silver. And we're not there yet, but we're going to get there. It'll be a simultaneous thing along with the cryptos, which we'll touch on in a moment. Yeah. So 
I think people should be looking at the structure of this more than worrying about dates and rates, because if the foundation is there, which it will be, people will be more than satisfied with what the rate's going to be, that and yeah. trust God for the process. But that's the currencies that I see them laying out at present day. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> you did mention some of them uh, countries. So you mentioned Indonesia is one of them. You mentioned um, Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. Vietnam, Iraq. Is there any other any other countries which is um, meant to be revaluing or any other currencies which you'd recommend that people don't really know about to maybe invest in or yeah i mean so a common question i get i'm sure maybe you get as well is and i get this almost like a religious dogmatic thing what about venezuelan bolivar of course they're the mm. fourth they were the fourth largest economy in the world they're not going to be left out folks just take a breath yeah. yes the the boulevard will go I think it will be in the next iteration of currencies, basket if you like, and then into that term, but whatever, semantics, they will go. <clears throat> and then it will do quite well because they have oil and gold, just like Vietnam and Iraq. I would be looking at the Thai bot, yeah. the Thailand currency. I would be looking at Colombia, Argentina. As you yeah. saw, we touched on this on the weekly wrap up. Javier Malay made a scathing remark to the World Economic Forum. He went into the belly of the beast and ripped them a new one. And talked about socialism does not work. Just ask Venezuela, amongst other countries, they can attest to that. And that this is the greatest economic time starting this year. That was a huge calm. I pray that people pick up on. So I'd be watching for the Argentinian, uh, is it the peso or the dollar, I believe? They devalued in December 50%. Why? We must ask. Maybe because they're going to destroy their currency and rebuild it, just like everybody else is doing. They're just Maybe President Trump is using Argentina front of center for the world yeah. before America comes in. So I'd be looking at the Colombian uh, peso. I'd be looking at El Salvador. Um, uh, Bukele, their president, is a very Christian, patriotic guy. Uh, they have a ton of plutonium people don't know about. <clears throat> They've got a lot of rich resources, obviously, in, in their, their climate for you know produce and things like that. El Salvador would be a good bet. North and South Korean won. They're going to do a merge after all this stuff happens in the next, I would say, between the next 12 to 14 months. But that'd be a good currency to get into once they merge. So those are just some examples to your question. Yeah. And uh, like I, I normally say to, to people, anything with the high denominations. So if, for instance, you was to buy $100 worth of a currency and you'll get in maybe five hundred thousand dollars worth in 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 the other denomination they're more likely to revalue stuff like europe and uh, usa yeah they're like in line already they're pretty much level at the moment oh that's fairly accurate it's a good summation <clears throat> i think going on a digital platform because of the backing the digital real-time blockchain transactions iso 20022 coupled with the rate of suppression i mean yeah. you got to look at vietnam as a perfect example 34 percent gdp gross domestic product higher than any other country in the world since 2010. it's a long sustainability <clears throat> so you say why have they been suppressed because of communism yeah. so the the easiest analogy chris is if you take a um, a slingshot mm. for kids and it's it's physics 101 you wind it all the way back you Pushing back, this represents a suppression. Well, yeah. what, did, what did Einstein say? Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. When that recoils yeah. and it goes the other way, which it's inevitably going to do here shortly, yeah. you're going to have a, a quick catch up and you're going to see an east-west reset where the west, yeah. us, takes a step back. You're going to see a 50% correction on the dollar you know, this year. And then you're going to see all these other currencies come to the forefront. And BRICS is playing an integral role in that because they hate the deep state and they hate the corruption and I don't blame them. And I'm, I'm American. I love America, but I don't like our, our, our system of government. I'm not a fan of your country system of government. I think oh, we can right. unilaterally agree that the people have always been subjugated by the, the, the crown and, and, and so forth. And that's all changing, which actually leads me up to a question for you, Chris, real quick, if you don't mind. Um, I put this in the, uh, the news today in our weekly wrap up. It looks like, uh, uh, Prince Andrew, I think, is taking over for Prince Charles due to a undisclosed medical illness. Is that making the wires over in England right now? Okay, so I I did I don't really read the the news myself, the mainstream news, but this morning I did see um, it said Prince Charles is ill, he's in uh, he's unwell, something's happened, he's meant to be stepping down. Um, 
sorry, not Prince Charles, sorry, King Charles, King Charles. And I didn't see it, it said Prince Andrew stepping in. Prince Andrew's the, the, the which, whatever you want to call him. He said Prince William might be stepping in. Is that not what you've seen or did it say Prince Andrew? You're right. It's hard to keep the names together. My apologies. Yeah, yeah, Prince I put William. the article out. It's Prince William is yeah. said to be taking reign as his father, King Charles, is reportedly abdicating yeah. prone to some undisclosed medical illness. I don't think anyone would approve of Prince, uh, Prince Andrew being the king yeah. of <laughs> my, king my of problem, England. Sorry. <laughs> um, too much information to try to keep together. Well, the point of that yeah. is, is you live there. So if you're yeah. seeing it, we're seeing it. The thing that I challenge people with and love in the weekly wrap up that you'll see when you put it together is um, countries copy each other, as we know. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're talking about the Biden, which we know about that. Um, now that we're seeing it in your country, might we see it in ours here in the near future? I believe we will. Yeah. And there's a lot of high end people. Um, that, was it the the was it the Queen of Denmark uh, mm -hmm. stepped down recently? Yeah. There's a few a few things happening. I can't, it's not all in my head right now, but there's a few bits been going on, and this is a good sign. This is a good sign that they they they're pushing out all the, the 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 bad guys, should I say? And they're realizing that they've done wrong, and oh. maybe they 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 know they're going to get in serious trouble, and they've probably been told you need to step down now and let let's let's fix the mess you've made. So yeah. that's what. I believe is happening worldwide at the moment. So not long till Biden's gone as well, I believe. I completely concur. And I'll give you a little juicy bit for people on this show, because you know, now we're in a flood phase, Chris. In the last past few years, it was drip, drip. Now it's just the water is breaking, the dam's breaking wide open. Perfect illustration. Between the time that I recorded the weekly wrap up over an hour ago, hour and a half, whatever it was, <clears throat> between that and now in the next few minutes, I just put this on our Telegram channel. Uh, yeah. This came from True Social. Sports Illustrated and Sports Illustrated, their entire staff has been sent on notice today that they're being laid off. The entire company. That's who's that, that? Who's that? Sorry, Sports Illustrated, okay. a very well-known athletic publication here in America. Uh, I believe it has worldwide outreach. Has yeah. just been told they're they're getting the axe. You also have. I put this in the yeah. wrap as well. That um, bear with me a second. Citigroup is laying off more bosses. They're going to have um, uh, 20,000 jobs over the next two years, which translates to a $1.8 billion capital loss to their company. And if Citigroup is doing that, you can be assured other banks are doing it's it. As everywhere. Well. Yeah. This is part of the new digital economic reality that's happening. So is, is this Nazara Jazara kind of everything coming in? To, would, would you say this is Nazara Jazara or... Everything happening, all the banks closing down in the UK, and uh, well, I, I think it's it's definitely got a part in it. Yes, it's yeah. is it solely Nasara. No, but I think it's a component. It's more to do with, um, you know, banks turning to wealth management centers to take advantage of the global reset that we're involved in. It's a way to cut costs. It's a way to trim the fat. It's a way to get people conditioned to go to the bank less and less and less. I talk to people. In my travels at you know the grocery store and and i say hey when's the last time you've gone to the bank well i haven't gone to the bank in a year or two depending who you're talking to a younger person i haven't gone to the bank in years you know and you know covid certainly played a role in that um so i think it's all contributing to the narrative but yes i think that uh ultimately it is it is part of nasara in the aspect that mm. the banks have to be what's called we've touched on this before for people who don't know <laughs> basil three and four compliant so Basel yeah. III relates to the tier one banks, your Wells Fargo, your Chase, your Barclays, your Citibank, Bank of America, JP Morgan, and the like, um, Royal Bank of Ontario, so forth, um, and HSBC. And Basel IV is specifically designated for your credit unions and your community banks. They're not bound by the same terms. But what it all really means is that the banks have to show transparency of how much gold and silver they're carrying in their balance sheets because only the banks that are carrying it and actually can prove it are going to survive. So you're going to see a lot of fleecing of banks in this season. Mm -hmm. And the ones that remain will be able to theoretically, when you go to cash a paycheck, they can digitally pay you in gold or silver if you like. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that information, John. Sure. Uh, just um, another, another one. I saw in one of our, your interviews this week with, um, I think it was Bill Holter. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he said that the the national debt clock was, <clears throat> was it says online it's uh, it's 20 trillion. 
but it said it's it's like more like 300 trillion is, is this correct because there's there's no way of paying that back that's a debt which will never be paid and what happens when a debt doesn't be paid they're well, gonna well, everything yeah. so does that mean they're gonna wipe everyone's loans is this what's what this means or so that's a yeah that's a good good conversation i i that's a <clears throat> the question i think has to be dissected in two parts yeah firstly what he said is if you took the the real true debt of what we owe as a, a in the u.s yeah. uh, he's what he said was is he said it's at least 200 trillion it could be up to 300 trillion because yeah. they're cooking the books and yeah. market manipulation for example we talked about on the show as you said um the job market. I'll give I'll give a classic example here in the states. Uh, uh, yellow is it Bluebird or, or or I can't remember the company. In August, a big trucking company. I think it was Yellow Yellow Trucking Company in August here in America. They're responsible for being the largest distribution chain to Walmart that everybody knows. They laid off thirty thousand workers. That's pretty significant. That's probably thirty five percent or more of their workforce. Right. That's wholly significant. Yeah. So you say well. Okay, so they did that, but it, it takes time through the quarters of each GDP, gross domestic product, to translate. So in English, what that means is they laid off 30,000 people last August. That doesn't mean that the numbers for those unemployment are going to translate right in August. Yes. Companies can manipulate those numbers because they're paying employees a severance package. Some people might get three months. Some people might get six months, whatever your job role was and how responsible you were and what your responsibilities entailed. The more management you had, the more responsibilities, probably the larger your severance package would be, theoretically. Yeah. So they have three to six months to show on the books that, hey, this person's still technically working because I'm paying them, even though they're not actually on the job physically working with the clients, I'm still paying them out. So I can constitute that as employment, even though technically, in reality, they're not. You see, that's a good example of market manipulation. Mm. If you fleeced all that out, to Bill's point, and actually, because Bill said the true unemployment of America is probably around 20%. It's over half the workforce. And he's right, because I see the commercial real estate in California drying up like a raisin. So you take all those components, and it, we really don't know what the true debt is. It's somewhere between two and 300 trillion. Yeah. And to pay off the debt, to his point, which is why I asked him the hard question, gold and silver's real value would have to be in the upper six figures to compensate. They're not mm -hmm. going to let that, the powers that be that are leaving are not going to let that happen right now because their goal, just like countries' goals to suppress the currency, is to suppress the, the true money market, oil, gold, yeah. and silver, for a time. But yeah. as people are buying, like you and me, are buying more gold and silver, then that gives them less and less of the ability to paper it down. Translation, they're going away, basal three and four, you start putting the pieces together, the, the jig is up. So they're, they're not going to allow gold and silver right now. To I, I would see gold and silver this year probably going somewhere between, uh, gold should be about 10 to 20,000 an ounce, like I said, and silver 200 plus, no problem. Once, they, once silver hits that $30 um, quota or cap, it'll start moving quickly. So all that is to say that it's probably between two and 300 trillion. And I asked him, if you remember, I said, you know, do you think they're going to just, you know, put quantitative easing, which just means printing more money, printing more money, which just devalues and debases our dollar more and more and more, which means we have to loan out more and more to Americans and to the entirety of the world, which is what they would yeah. like, are not going to get. Yeah. Um, translates that they will have to default on the debt because there is no way to pay it back because it's all artificial to begin with based yeah. on what I've seen. So that is a form of Nasara Jasara. And yes, I've already been seeing people's credit cards and cars and student loans and medical bills eviscerated and wiped away. When they call up the, the companies, the agencies, the response that I'm hearing from the people that tell me this is that, you know, hey, we, we, uh, your account's been wiped clean. We have no record or we don't even have a record of you, which is crazy, right? Because people have been paying on this for you know years, if not decades, and all of a sudden it's just gone. So there's going to be a natural default when the banks can't paper this debt anymore. Yeah, is answered your question. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thanks for that, John. Okay, so um, moving forward, I have <clears throat> one more subject I want to just go by. I've seen a few emails actually. Yeah, please. Um, on Nick Nicholas's uh, show, Nicholas Benyamin's show mm -hmm. before used to speak quite a bit about Shiba and 
cryptocurrencies and XRP and I'm just getting floods of emails with people asking <laughs> What's the updates on this at the moment? Because we haven't really spoken about cryptos in a while. So have you got any updates or news on the crypto market or what to buy, yes. whatever Excuse you recommend, really? I do. So I'm going to answer that in two parts again. There, yeah. I'm a financial advisor. Yeah. It's not constituted as financial advice. I'm yeah. just giving you what I have done myself. Yeah, no, of course. As I said on shows before, and I'll recap again for those who haven't heard it, there's thousands of coins out there, right? Yeah. Just like anything else. Just like in sports, there's thousands of athletes vying to be professional and only a certain amount can get in, right? Maybe 180 to 200 players can make the cut out of tens of thousands of athletes vying for those positions. Similarly, cryptos are the same way. There's, I think, two or 3,000 coins out there. I think there's seven or 10 that'll make the cut. Here's what I have. XRP, gold. Well, it will be gold. XLM and silver. XDC and copper. IOTA and Algorand which is platinum and palladium. And then we go to meme coins like Shiba, which is on its own Shibarium. Satoshi Kazama, who has been purposely holding this back, is going to have an attack of conscience at some point here, and he's getting enough pressure brought to bear that Shiba will finally break free, I believe, sometime this year at a, at a penny and then go up. Um, that's to draw a lot of holders to get quick cash out of desperation out of the market. Personally, I'm not cashing all of mine in. I have enough of it where I could, you know, cash a certain percent and have plenty left and then just, you know, reload. And I'm going to yeah. do that with some other things. Bitcoin, as an example, is going to tank and yeah. then it's going to reload. So I have buy, sell limit orders on Coinbase for that to yeah. get my whole positions when that goes. We've talked about that privately. Now we're talking about it publicly. Yeah. Um, but Shiba will, will be forced to be brought to bear. As to XRP, um, it's sitting in a holding pattern right now on purpose. The SEC is trying to keep it down because they're in bed with Ethereum. That's about to change. What we see happening in the next, not coincidentally, with the dinar, in the next yeah. 60 days or less, we would see, uh, forecasting, we would see uh, where XRP is going to win outright, not even have to pay a settlement of $20, $30 million. SEC is just going to go, screw it. We're done. We can't do this anymore. The yeah. jig is up. And they're going to let it go. And I would see XRP going about fifteen to thirty dollars this year, and then next year uh, fifty to one hundred. Is an interesting article I actually put on our Telegram. Mate, you can see, and others can look if they want to scroll back. But uh, Twisted Christian, which I put, um, I always try to acknowledge the source. Twisted Christian, who's a really good source in this community and a godly man himself, um, he has prophetic articles that are showing that XRP can will. Its plateau is probably around 25,000 a coin. We don't know the exact data, obviously. We don't do that here. But I would seriously, that's going to be the, the, the King Kong of the crypto market because that's okay. the goal of the blockchain, the ISO 20022, that lets all these companies want to get in on it because it's part of the new digital blockchain. So that's kind of my update for you on, on where we sit present day. Okay, cool. So it sounds to me like the cryptos is similar to the RVs. So for instance, as far as I know, uh, the last time I checked, I think you can get like <clears throat> almost a, a billion in Shiba for a few hundred dollars, something along them lines, a billion uh, or is it a million? No, I, I, no, not quite. I, not, my math is not, I, you could get, you could probably get, um, I have to do the math, but I think you could probably get like, 50 million Shiba for like $750, something like yeah, that. So a high amount. So what the, what they were saying was that they look looking to, I know on some of these cryptocurrencies. So if you did invest $750 and you had uh, like, like you said, 50, was it 50 million? A small yeah. investment, you can make a, a good bit of money, basically. Oh, and yeah. that's what they're saying with the, the currencies as well. So this is why it's good to, I say to everyone, spread your eggs in different <laughs> baskets invest what you can invest what feels right like you always say john where, where would you buy cryptos yourself so me myself i buy them on the binance platform i'm not saying that's the place to go is sure. anywhere you'd recommend because people do what email us yeah i mean there's great options out there but this is one kraken i i get xrp on uphold it's a british company i believe okay I've had success with them coinbase coinbase yeah. wallet um quant is another good one there's there's okay. reputable there's a few options out there there's, there's several options yeah 
yeah some people say keep it on a mm. for like a offline platform like a ledger stick or what's your view on this anything anything about I this agree. i agree nano is a good one ledger i personally i've marketed myself descent it's yeah. a screen company um i yeah. like them because they have 24 word uh password protection and digital oh, fingerprint encryption so they have some redundancy in there and uh, they they are very good about doing updates every month or so, and they're they're stacking relationships, and they keep you informed. So that's been my personal preference. But but I'd say the stick or ledger, or, uh, uh, um, descent wallet, razor, you you can't go wrong with those. It's personal preference. Okay, great. So there's a few options, guys, to buy um, cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. uh, we we do have a an online website. We uh, recommend to buy. The normal currencies, so like the dongs, the dinars, the zims, we will leave the link for that one in the the video description below. Is there any other questions you would like to ask, John, before we wrap up this interview? I do. I have a couple for you, and then I Come just on. got some updates fresh off the off the stove. Cool. Um, John Solomon is reporting that grand jury indicts Alec Baldwin. So that's another okay. happy another day. We're talking about. So, so we're going to see more arrests and indictments and resignations of actors, musicians, corporate mm. people, athletes. It's it's uh, the sec the was it no Golden State Warriors assistant coach just died at forty six. Oh wow! I think, I think we we know what that was. Yeah. So um, yeah, a couple of questions I have for you, mate, on your end on the marketing side. Um, I get queries a lot between our Rumble channel and some other things people ask about. Uh, as I read the comments occasionally, uh, are do you, what marketing initiatives do you have? And do you have any plans to do like a live chat room or something like that where people can get involved in a community front? Okay, so um, yeah, we have actually got plans. We're, we're, we're working on this at the moment. So some of you may have seen that we have got some, uh, it's, it's a website, it's called The Real World AC. And what this is, it is um, it's a platform where you can go online, we are teaching, we've got a few methods of teaching people how to basically escape the matrix and not live in the system. We're teaching some uh, education, which helps people make money from home and not have to go and find jobs where they're taxing you like no tomorrow. On this, we're actually building a community as well. So we are going to be building, it's going to be like a, a backend live stream. So maybe once or twice a week, we can go online and we're going to we can do a live, we can, the viewers will be able to speak to us and engage with us, ask live questions. And there's also going to be a community in the built in the back of this. So I, I don't know about you, John, but when I first came into this world, um, it was very lonely. We'd go tell our friends, we'd go tell our, our parents, everyone would think we was the crazy ones and we're, we're conspiracy theorists. So I know there's a lot of people out there that feel alone in this. And it's a nice place to meet like-minded people. So that's that's going to be coming out in the next few weeks. So look out for that. I'll leave the link for that in the description as well. It's called the Real World Academy. So um, that's, I hope that's answered your question, John. It does. It does. And <clears throat> I'll answer a question that I got here, which I, we try to catch everybody's questions and not make them feel like they're ignored. Yeah. One of the questions I got in the comments was, what about savings bonds? <laughs> Well, first of all, I sort of say jocularly, have they ever really been worth anything to begin with? I mean, you get a savings bond. Well, I got one when I was a kid for like 25 bucks and it would take 50 years to mature to even get $100 or $200. It's yeah. the money, the, the, the time you spend waiting out, outranks the money you would get. So they're not valuable now. I know anything, <clears throat> let me encapsulate this question with everything else and put it in a bow nicely. Anything that's tied to paper, the Federal Reserve note, which is not part of the government in any way anymore, and Federal Express, as Greg Manorino says, who we'll be interviewing with next month. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, just a shameless plug. Um, the Federal Reserve note, uh, you know, 401ks, IRAs, uh, pensions, um, a gold and silver certificates, anything paperbacked is worthless because you don't touch the genesis of it. They do, the holder does, the government does. So they're controlling the cards. So savings bonds to me fall right into that category. So no, I I think they're pretty much as you would say in your country, rubbish. Yeah, they're dated. They're dated. Not many people uh, use yeah. them these days. I had some for me a few years ago, but you lose track of this. It's part of well, the government, isn't it? They take it when it's not something you always cash out. We don't know. Well, most people don't know how to even access it. 
Well, they were they were valuable pre-war before Nixon took us off the gold standard. You know, pre nineteen forties to sixties, yeah, they had immense value because yeah. people could invest in in the restructuring of America post World War II. Yeah. But once the gold standard was removed in the seventies, it became pointless. Oh, nothing, that was nothing their, for their benefit, not for ours. Um, one last question I have for you, mate, on your end on the technical side. I get this question a fair amount. Uh, one of the vendors that you you have put up before chakra energy people have had issues with taking delivery or long delays and not getting customer service responses yeah. um you're saying it's not your company or mine but uh but we we do advertise them um what can you say to the viewers to give them some reassurance and address that yeah. issue so i did see a few emails around christmas and you you pointed out to me as well that some of our our viewers um were not happy with uh, their service or but we reached out to them and we says we, we did ask them why is our viewers not getting their orders and it turns out they just got caught up in the christmas rush with delivering and they are a, an overseas company they've told us that everyone that was waiting for their orders has got their order and they've resumed business as normal and uh we've been recommending them for almost three or four years now and uh yeah we i don't really hear many problems about them uh, and fellow um Fellow truthers as well also speak highly of them. So I don't think no one's got anything to worry about when you're dealing with chakra energy for your currencies. Nice, nice. Thank you for addressing that. Just to give some some comfort to some people there than that in that um, logistics predicament. Oh, yeah. one other question I get, <clears throat> maybe you get it as well, with regards to the Zimbabwe. There's a lot of banter out there. I've I've debunked a lot of it. I'll do it again. Uh, that the Zim is only for humanitarian purposes. Rubbish. Mm -hmm. You bought it. They didn't tell you when you bought it, you could only use it for humanitarian purposes. That's guru nonsense, that, yeah. that machinations of people with an agenda. Um, and they, they are irresponsible to be putting out rates to because they don't know. They're just guessing and they're yeah. trying to look important to build their channel and stuff like that. That's why integrity for us is more important than, any, than anything. Your channel yeah. will build when you're telling the truth and you're helping God's people, which is obviously what we're about. So, um, no. 90% of those humanitarian projects are not real. Are there some that are real? Yes. But are the overwhelming majority real? No. Do you, when you go to cash out at the bank, not the redemption center, sorry, spoiler alert, um, are they going to ask you for a business plan? No. How do I know? Because I've talked to wealth managers and private bankers. I'm the one yeah. that took pictures last July that Mahoney used that was the first to break out that Wells Fargo is converting to wealth management in tangible yeah. form, not cgi or made up pictures like on the spot and mm -hmm. i you know like you i know how to talk to people and get information and you build a relationship people feel comfortable they open up and they've said yes well we will exchange on the zims we're not talking about rates i said i understand but we, you're gonna yeah. are you gonna do it as a currency he said no we have a bond division that it's gonna go i said so yeah. i can exchange my zim at your bank they said correct and i said do i have to have a business plan or a humanitarian project and they laughed and they're like what are you talking about i was like nothing i just wanted to hear you say that yeah. so you own your Zims once yeah. again, and you are your own humanitarian project. Yeah. You don't right. need permission from anyone else to be wealthy except from God who imbued it to you in the first place. Some other questions I get are, well, what plans do I have? Okay. Well, among other things, leading a music ministry and a new, uh, starting a new uh, asylum partner on building a church. About four years ago, a friend of mine brought to my attention a property in Middle Tennessee where I'm going to be moving to adjacent to the compound I'm going to build with a studio, recording studio and on my personal property um, uh, was a, a huge amount of land, which I, I said to God, I said, you know, what am I going to do with this? I don't need this much. And God's like, it's not about you. It's about me and what I want to do. I was like, OK, what do you want to do? And it was like, I'll tell you at a later date. As time progressed, I started to realize what this property was wholly designed for was something that I would have never considered. I don't have any training in it, but that doesn't matter. God doesn't need you to have expertise. He needs you to have willingness and servitude and just go with it. And to that end, this property is going to be uh, remodeled and repurposed for the intent of rest, uh, sex trafficking victims, men and women and children who made it out the other side, whether it's in America or throughout the world, it'll be a safe haven of land for them, for my yeah. future family as needed, for your future people as needed, got a water source. I'm sure it's got natural minerals on it. It's got an equestrian farm, which just by the way, no coincidence, is very healing for kids and, and, and women in particular, um, mm -hmm. as people obviously have strong bonds with animals. 
I have some good friends who own some farms in Tennessee and they can attest to that. I'm sure you know if you have pets, you've got kids, I know, so you can relate to that. Um, so these are all tenants that are designed to help these folks rebuild their lives and reacclimate into the whole of society. They'll have the option to either live there the rest of their days or they can live there for a, a you know a, a finite period of time. And then if they decide they want to reacclimate in the world, they can go off land and go somewhere else and we can bring somebody else on the property. So it'll be a revolving door for people to heal and recover in a place where we can serve, um, you know, because Kim Clement talked about serving the poor, the lonely, the needy, the hungry, the widows, the orphans. I can't think of a better way to encapsulate those things in this project. Now, some other people will be working specifically with homeless missions and, and giving those people that want to get off the streets. That's a beautiful thing, Chris, is that God is going to allow his people to use their different sundry talents in the variety of ways they see fit and do it in a creative way. This just happens to be a personal project that I'm locking arms with um, once, you know, post RV happens. Well, that sounds like a great plan. And I'll, I'll be happy to join you with that as well, John. I appreciate that. Thank you. So yeah, that's uh, that's everything. Is there anything else you'd like to cover? No, I just else? just say to as Nick always says, anything else you want to say? You know, I just say, folks, you know, hang in there, keep the faith. Uh, I put a prophetic prayer in from John Nego, Currency Three Sixty Five last night. I recommend you all watch. Where we're getting with a lot of resistance, people are at their breaking points. We're at that tension release and music point, and God is is just making sure that we're with Him and that we're wholly trusting Him. And as he continues to see our hearts are knitted to him, he'll break us out of that, and then the blessings will come. So just hang in there. You made it this far. He'll help us the rest of the way. Thank you. Thank you for that, John. Welcome. And uh, thank you for everyone for tuning in and watching our video. And uh, until the next one, John. Sounds good. See you again soon, Chris. Appreciate your time. Take care, mate. Bye-bye.